Welcome to the Go Procast, where we invite business doers who are changing lives by sharing their stories, their strategies and tactics, and who bravely talk about their failures that actually led to their biggest successes. Now it's time to Go Pro with Jeremy Torres. Today, my guest started a painting business fresh out of high school with no money, no experience, and no connections, and no success. Refusing to give up, however, Terry began perfecting his people skills, and his business blew up, which only goes to prove your network is truly your net worth. Now, Terry has refined his processes for business and personal growth through customer engagement and retention. As you all know, that is very near and dear to our heart here. Leveraging this unique lesson has allowed his company to grow year after year, even though Terry has not advertised since 2012. Unbelievable. Terry is an international speaker and author of Attract and Keep Customers for Life. And his course, Unnoticed to Unforgettable, has just been released in the fall of last year. Please welcome to the Go Procast, Terry Big. Sir. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for having me on, Jeremy. This is exciting. Did I jump the gun on your release of your program, though? Is it out quite out yet? Uh, it is out. Nice. It came out about two weeks ago. Good. Boy, done, that was close. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done any marketing with it yet. So just getting started with all that. Good, good. Well, we'll have to talk about that offline too, because that is a tricky, uh, you know, sticky widget too, trying to get people to notice your course. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it has a ton of value, and I, I'm looking forward to promoting that later down the line too. Great, thank you. So I uh, start off every uh, one of my shows with an homage to a friend of mine, a business coach and uh, author himself, Mr. Steve Noodleberg. Uh, he's got a show called Tell Me Something Good. So, uh, Mr. Terry, tell us something good. Something good. Wow. You mean from my story? Anywhere. Any, how's your good? day going? Any, any, anything good at all? Let's start it off on the, great. on the good. Yeah, I'm here in Northeast Ohio in freezing cold, but I have more work than I can do. And and I love being in that situation. I, I found the one thing that makes that Damn. I sleep better at night is if I have a pipeline <laughs> full of jobs. Yes. Uh, I, I give bids and, and it doesn't matter if I get the job or not. I mean, it does matter to me, yeah, but know. if I don't get it, it doesn't hurt. It just, it takes a lot of pressure off and just everything's easier. And even through the winter, that's worked that way for me. So that's yes. one thing I'm excited about. It's nice doing bids without commission breath, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah they, they can price it right. It's going to oh. be what it's going to be. And I was at the other end there where they could smell that a mile away. Mm. People knew I was desperate, and it only got worse from there. Yeah, yeah. Can you <laughs> stretch a dime into a dollar? You know, and, and we, we've done those jobs in the past, and it never works out. But when you have that pipeline full or semi-full where you could do, mm -hmm. here's my price. It's an honest price. It's gonna, it's, it is what it's going to take. It's going to make me a little money, which is why I'm in business, but it's a fair price. And then when they come back and ask you to you know, trim this or that, you go, listen, don't need to, you know, <laughs> go, right. go get the other guy to, and to, I tell, to do the change orders for you. <laughs> yeah. And I do tell my customers sometimes I say, I don't say I'm the highest, but I say, you probably can get lower bids than mine. I said, but I'll, I'll deliver quality. I said, I, you'll, you'll, everything will be easy when you, yes. When you hire me, all you got to do is pick a color. Everything else is handled. Yeah, that's great. So the business is painting and your your yeah. story is great because uh, you started off right out of high school full of piss and vinegar, for so yep. to speak. Exactly. <laughs> Thinking that you could go out there and just start a business and uh, mm -hmm. paintbrush and, and a can of paint and that's all you need, right? Yeah. And well, I think then what happened? Yeah, I, I think I chose painting for that reason. You can get started for a hundred bucks and you're in business, yeah, that's right. you know, and, and that was about all I had. So what happened? As I said, nobody hired me. I got into that low price bidding wars with other yeah. painters, which is, of course, as you know, a race to the bottom. Yeah. And the only jobs I got seemed like are the ones no one else wanted. And oh, my gosh, I could remember it, it thinking if I pay full price for this gallon of paint, I'm not even going to make mi minimum wage, things like that. And it was just sorry. Yeah, you sorry pull yourself, situation. right? You say, you well, it's, it's a job, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, it takes money to, to make money and I'm going to get my name out there and I'm going to use this as a platform to get the next job. And oh, it's and, not the reality. Yep. And the people tell you, you know, I'm going to get you, give me a good deal. I'm going to get you lots of work. 
You know, that's oh my famous gosh. last I, words. I, oh. I bought it. I bought into that too. So we all have. <laughs> we all have this job. Take the good with the bad. Have you heard that one? Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. And just you know, live through it. It's a great experience. It'll be a good story on a podcast like this someday. <laughs> yeah, true, someday, but at that minute, it doesn't yeah. happen. So it, when you when you say it failed, uh, did you have to do something else? Did you have to go uh, get no, a, a job? I wouldn't give up. I, yep, that ugly three-letter word. And and, it, <laughs> and you know, I, I found a report by um, oh some research institute about entrepreneurs. Until then, I thought there's something wrong with me because I had jobs right out of high school, a few of them, mm -hmm. and I was, I was never fired. I just didn't stick around very long either. Yeah. And uh, but it was that entrepreneurial thing. My spirit. doctor says I'm ADHD, and he says, "Oh, I saw it right away." And that's why I said it's amazing. It's probably good then that I'm an <laughs> entrepreneur. And he said, "You couldn't have been anything else, Terry." Yes, it, it, you didn't I resemble it. that comment. <laughs> it, it, it shows you. And uh, seeing that, I just, I, I, and in the wintertime, I took a few sales jobs because I knew I needed to learn how to sell. And yes. I didn't know that either. I mean, looking back in hindsight, I should have just worked for a painter, you know, it swallowed my pride and spent a year doing yeah, that. Yeah, apprentice, I, apprentice. It's all about mm -hmm. not even, you know, I guess it's pride, but it's mindset, right? Like yep. uh, I'm learning on his dime, yep, right? Exactly. Or their dime. And, and I had that stubborn attitude that I, I remember telling my wife, we got married when we were young. We didn't have to, but we, I was 21 and she was just 19. And I promised her I was going to be a big deal. I said, oh, stick with oh, me, kid. Great. Good. And uh, I was a train wreck. I mean, that first Christmas, <laughs> I, I, I don't even want, if I tell the story, I'll cry. So I'm just real quick going to say, I remember rolling loose change, rolling pennies to buy my wife a gift for Christmas yeah, that year. Yeah. It was that sorry. And yeah. Um, that's but my motivation now though i'm telling you right. it is good fear is a great motivator and fear of going back there for me is a big one one mm -hmm. christmas and I, I wasn't young i was an older man i was 40 years old and uh, i'd lost everything because the housing bubble burst back in 2009 mm -hmm. burst and i was doing fiber optic cable to new build houses mm -hmm. and that was my industry and so uh my kids were gosh um i don't know tw uh, 10 and 12 maybe and i brought i said i remember sitting up tailgate in my truck saying week before Christmas, you know, and just having nothing and saying, pick one present between the two of you and I'll try my best to get it. And they picked some sort of Xbox or, you know, a game <laughs> console as I threw it all our present. I said, all right, I could probably swing that, you know, in my head. And uh, knowing though that they're, you know, I was divorced. For, so I knew they were going to get some mother and their grandparents and all, you know, mm -hmm. that's crap. So I was like, <laughs> I, but at my house it, as a man to, to sit here and, and, or, you know, have them open one gift and, Oh, but they hard. took it like champs though it teach, mm -hmm. taught them a lesson taught me a lesson you know mm -hmm. we're not materialistic people so uh right. it really it really it opened my eyes because for the rest of their lives now i don't get them anything because they they don't need it i'm just kidding oh, <laughs> <laughs> i actually did uh, pretty good in life since then it was a big eye opener but it really yeah. taught them a lesson i think though seeing that yeah. so yeah, for you, you were... that impact though how did you find out after that realization and then there was another bombshell coming right the uh with my wife telling me she was pregnant mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that that woke me up and that was when i really made the change at first i thought well this is just how it's going to be eventually i told her i'll get better you know i'll make i'll get better jobs and it just i was just kidding myself and right her, well you don't know what you don't know at yeah that, at that age. But, but then you know people can say well i remember what year my life changed i can tell you the minute my life changed wow. and there's one that came home wife had tears in her eyes never a good sign when you come home right <laughs> And she just looks at me and she says, Terry, I'm pregnant. And it, it was like like a switch had flipped in my brain. You know, all of a sudden this crappy lifestyle that I was providing was no longer going to cut it. No. And the big, the big and people say, well, what did you do? And there were a few cute key things, but they all motivated by one thing. I took action. Didn't know what the heck I was going to do, but I was going to get busy. Yes. Love that. Take an action. Any action, crazy, consistent action is what yeah. I tell people to do. You know, I pick a direction and just go with it and ferret it out. Yep. And to... I was so focused on taking action. I did the wrong thing sometimes, but it didn't matter. I just didn't want to stay but in that But you place. learned something. Yep. But but the cool thing is, eight months later, my son was born, and I doubled my income. Ah. And and um, what was it? Maybe two months later, we moved into a brand new house. It was just everything changed for me, and it was all because I took that first step, that that action step. Yeah. Um, I got into some professional organizations. I I I was a house painter, but I got into some uh, home improvement shows at the malls. Nobody, yeah. no no painters did that. But I came out of there with so many leads. Wow. It, it was crazy. I bet I got. 
I bet I got 50 to 100 jobs out of the houses to paint, which is huge, especially for me. <laughs> I did, I only did one or two a year before that. Wow. So now, I hired, not, did you have to pay for that? And how did I, you come up with that money? I had to I had to hire a crew. That was a little bit scary. But we started getting done in a day what I used to get done in a week. Right. But what, what happened, and it was sort of by accident, I wanted to get into this home and garden show. And they said it was like $1,000. But they said, but if you're a NARI member, National Association of the Remodeling Industry, I'd never even heard of them before that. But if you're a member of that, you can get in for, for um, yeah. what did they say, like $200. It was crazy. So I called up NARI and I said, how much does it cost to be a member? And that was like $400. So, <laughs> so it was a no-brainer. Yeah. But but I found that once I got into that organization there, even though I was just a rookie that was still really green, all of a sudden in my customer's eyes, I was like all those other guys in there, all mm. the professionals, those high-end uh, remodeling companies. I was one of the guys all yeah. of a sudden, even though I really wasn't. Yeah, the credit, yeah, the accreditation. Yeah. And then, was, but but you're, you're taking those steps to make it better. Yeah, it was what right. I stay, call in my book, Believability. Once I created that with my customers, then they started giving me a chance. And then from there, from there, it rolled into the important one, which is trustability. You yeah. know, I have, so in my book, it's the four abilities that I talk about in there. Likeability, believability, trustability, and wow ability. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place. No, here. I love <laughs> it because guess what? You you obviously have heard of ADHD. I have 100 <laughs> HD. <laughs> so this is going to be a crazy, I'll try to keep us on, on point. But uh, let's funny. just jump to the book really fast because the book, uh, to, so first of all, you wrote this as mm -hmm. a full-time, you're still work painting, running your crews full-time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. I, in the winter time, we're slow here in Ohio. You know, I take inside jobs, but it, when I was writing the book, I took the whole winter off. And okay. Two winters off, actually, to do it. But that was important yeah. to you. So the book yes. is is called, let's see, let me get to the right. Oh, I, I made the wrong one big. See? There we go. <laughs> so the book is called, um, this is your, your LinkedIn page, which is a great page, by the way, and you're, you're making you. it uh, all about the book, but keep, uh, attract and keep customers for life. And there's the four abilities you talked about. Yep. Um, this, wh where'd you get the idea? What is there nothing out there or how'd you come up with these four things? And th this is interesting. I, I wanted to name, I wanted something that I could, you know, kind of grab onto and some people remember me by, and I thought, well, I knew you needed to have no like, and trust is what I was always yeah, taught. Yeah, yeah. You know, once you're, that's all you want to work on. And I thought, well, no, that's, you know, likability is like, and, and no is sort of like that. And, um, uh, but to get to the trust part, I thought, for a customer to go from liking me to trusting me, that's a pretty big leap. And so I thought, no, there's, there's more to it than that. And I tried all these things out. I've worked them over and over with mm. customers. Nothing that I do is theory. It's all stuff I've worked. I've yes, done yes, a thousand yes. times now, but I had to build believability. And one of those things was being a member of NARI, uh, letting them go to my website, which talked about all the houses we did and all the testimonials that I had. Those things created believability. Yeah, when authenticity. They got, Yep. And, and then when they when they started to see that I was the real deal, you know, in time, I kept my promises. If I said I was going to be there at 830, I showed up at 830. If I said we we're going to be done by Thursday, we were I mean, I kept I those. Yeah. These are all little things that make up that things. And I started building trustability. And once I had that life got really easy once people started mm. because Stephen Covey Jr., you know, senior is the eight habits of highly effective people. Well, his son, Stephen jr wrote a book called the speed of trust great book huh. and it's all about how life is so much easier when you're trusted and that wow. is the what i call the golden ticket and uh the last one wow ability that's more like referrals on steroids that's sort of after you got the job you just blow them away with service and and uh things like that i know I'm so <laughs> to get those uh tr those um the comments that people you know made about you and the the, the uh, testimonies did you fiz mm -hmm. just make it a point to ask each customer to go it, ahead and give you, did you do I, the I did. video? Did you do them? Yep. How did you get them? What, what, what shape I, did I, they I did it first. And as I started to learn how important they were, just the sheer number on my people go to my website and there's a link to, or that page is just testimonials and they can scroll for a long time and yeah. nobody's going to read them all, but when it's just a sheer number shows, Hey, this guy, he's really, he's serious. A lot of people see people they know on there. Oh. And then I found out video ones were even better. Are, and I, yeah. I talk about in my book, how to get video testimonials, how to get testimonials. If you've never done a job, you know, I talk about character endorsements when yes. I first started, I didn't have any, you know, so I had, have uh, um, people like the the, the um, minister in our town would support me and uh, friends and family even I would use I'd work for them for free just to get a great testimonial. 
things yeah. like that you might have to yeah, do two for you get to help the community and yep. there's a value in it because they're giving you the testimonials exactly. and they're an established known entity that gets out there and read and yep. yeah yeah and people see my job signs and they just those all, all things that build the believability but it's it's it just it keeps rolling you never stop doing it and uh, right. it just it just gets easier now, what about your employees now? How many employees did you build the company to? Uh, at, 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 we had our, and we tried at one time, it, it takes about myself, I'd be right there on the job with my guys and three of us to paint a house in one day. That was the key for us to turn houses over quick. But we had to take just certain jobs to do that. Aluminum sided homes and cedar siding where we can mask and spray. That's why we do them in one day. Mm -hmm. And once I started doing that and I, I, and I thought, well, let's try another crew. So I had two crews going and we did about 150 houses one summer. And it was just by the end of the year, I saw I didn't really make that much more money because screw ups yeah. on the other crew. And, and, um, it's, everywhere. And, and, you know, I have to micromanage my guys. It doesn't help as far as keeping people because it's hard to to just let them lead. And I try to do that more and more, but being there on the job, the customers love that. So now it's just, it's just me and a couple guys, but we turn over about a hundred houses every summer in, in like yeah. eight months. Yeah. Those are it, big numbers because we pick out, we handpick the jobs and I, my customers know I, I choose them as much as they choose me. <laughs> yeah. And I, I change my message sometimes on my answering machine to say, I'm sorry, but because of the demand, unless you have an aluminum or a cedar sided or a stucco house, I can't even help. Isn't you. that I'm great. So Isn't that a great place to be though? I, like you said, I, life is good. You get time to, yeah. to help the community. You get a little yep. time to yourself. Yep. It is. It's, it's a great place to be. And until I got there, I had no idea how cool it was going to be, but yeah. it just, it just gets better. I mean, through the winter here, I've been giving bids all winter for outside. I mean, I, I got to take my, wear my boots to give estimates. And, and even though it's uh, <laughs> snowing out people that, and they all say the same thing. Oh, I know you get booked up for the year. I just want to get on your schedule early. And I love, it. they tell me that before I even give them a price. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Then, you, and you know, they, cause they know it's going to be fair. You, you've yep. been around forever. You're a staple of the yep. community and you know. uh, getting to a place like that takes just people don't understand. They see the duck, but they don't see the feet under the water because yeah. yeah. every day you have to repeat the same thing. Yep. It is. It's just, it's simple little things, but the, I, the thing is it, the, there's, well, they're so simple easy doesn't to mean do. It's easy. Exactly. They're, even though they're simple, exactly. But the, the the idea is doing it every day though it's the it's the um repetition that makes a yes. difference and a lot of people think it, that it's simple it's easy but it's also really easy not to do oh yeah um, guy jeff olson wrote a book called the slight edge and that's what he talks about so many people skip over these easy simple little things like getting up at a certain time and planning your day out before you before you leave for work and doing them and, but they all say they're so easy they're easy not to do as well and that's yeah. kind of the whole um the whole idea of his book and i loved uh, it i guess it's mm -hmm. even hard to get out of bed when it's you know 30 or 20 or 10 degrees out <laughs> like here where i live it's always pretty much balmy so getting out of oh, bed gosh. you have no excuse right <laughs> it'd be excuse? hard to go to work if i live down in oh. Southern Florida, I think. Oh, my. yeah it, it's got its own let me tell you something to august september it is a sauna outside so you want to get a lot of inter indoor work for, for them i was climbing poles and and oh, gaff and poles for years in that heat. And uh, my wife used to say, you know, go on Sunday, we'd be going out with the family and have the, the babies in the car. She's like, oh, it's so hot. And I just look at her and say, don't say that. Because I can't <laughs> even think about how hot it is. You know, that's my job is uh, outside climbing these poles. Oh, uh, so I used to, she, I had to train her, <laughs> so to oh, speak, you know. But you yeah. put it out of your mind and you do it because it has to be done. Yep. Yeah. Now, and how important is liking what you do? Like, do you still love it? I, do you still enjoy it? I still love my job. And honestly, back when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was thinking, boy, as soon as I can get out of this business, I'm yes. getting out. I mean, I, I I didn't hate it. It's just it was like a job. But now I love I love my job even more. I don't know how I'm ever going to retire. I turned 63 in a few months. Oh, bless you. And uh, actually in a few weeks. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I told my wife, I said, I don't know. I, my uh, my financial planner wants me to work till I'm 71. I said, no, I don't go, I'm not going to go that far, but it's going to be hard to retire. It really is probably for me. Retirement will be maybe just be stepping back a little bit and not doing as much. Learning training. how not to macromanage is going to be tough. I, it took yep. me a long time, but when, when you're in a very, you know, what's the word laborious job that mm -hmm. is very uh, fine. You know, it's an art painting, mm -hmm. you know, leaving the stripes, the streaks, yeah. and then not, you know, overlapping all the stuff that's involved with painting that I hate. I don't mm -hmm. have the patience for it. Uh, to, to get people to work for you without you looking, 
that's a very tall order because you've got the you know both sides of that coin with the fine motor skills but also the the backbone and the hard mm -hmm. go giver uh, attitudes mm -hmm. to have and it's still customer relations you're not tracking stuff around knocking furniture over right. letting dogs out i mean there's so <laughs> many things to it but maybe you can just learn how to sit in an ac truck and watch them <laughs> read uh, a newspaper or write your next book I, I right. I hope I can do that, but I don't know. I I don't see it happening for a while yet. I like as I said, since things um since I started um applying these things, it's just gotten easier and easier every year. And I and I can't wait to get started in the spring again. I think I've already got 13 houses ready to go. People want and every one of them said, I want to be the first one. And I say, Oh okay. yeah, yeah. But, they, <laughs> but when we start up in March, they usually don't. They say, Oh, maybe give me a few more weeks. So I, I just do the really serious ones that are selling their house or something that want to get it done. So what is the um, what what is the the book aimed to help people do? I mean, is it it, is it will it help any industry? Do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it applies. I mean, I wrote it in in the kind of for the service industry, the home services, so roofers, drywallers, insulation, anything like that. But really, anybody that sells. So you might as well say just about anybody because we all sell yeah, our ideas. Yeah, we all do right? Or our projects or even our product, everybody's in sales to a certain extent. And really what it is, a lot of soft selling skills is what's in what the book is made up of. Is it making yourself likable and then more believable? But like I said, the key is getting to what I call the golden ticket and that's trust, trustability. Yeah. Yes. You know, so you know. uh, when you are, uh, are you, do you speak much? Because I know that this is going to tend mm -hmm. to lend itself to you speaking to groups. Um, and how does that look like? How did that come around? Yeah, I, I loved it. When I started, I wrote a first book about 10 years ago, and I kind of cannibalized it into this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was writing that one, the woman that was helping me do it, there wasn't a lot of coaches around then, but I told her, I said, I'm going to get it done in one winter. And she knew I barely even read a book, much less write a book. <laughs> she said, you're never, I said, no, I'm going to, I'll get it done. You don't know me. I'll, and I right. did get it done. Yeah. And um, uh, she said, I'll help you, but only under one condition. I want you to join Toastmasters. And I thought, what? Oh, great. I said, no, I said, I, no, I want to write. I'm not going to give a speech. I wanted to hide behind my words, yes. actually. But oh my gosh, to she knew Toastmasters helped me so much. That's one of the biggest things I tell people in my book that they, they really need to do is um, if you can't find the right professional organization, at least join Toastmasters. That's right. I'm obviously the president of my Toastmasters uh, associate uh, oh group here. Yeah. I, I yeah. got to speak in Malaysia because it, I made the semifinals and wow. uh, Vancouver. I got to travel the world and give speeches in the contest. You know, they do a speech yes. contest every yep. year. Seven minutes. Very tough. I love it. Yeah, it is tough. tough. tough oh, man. To do seven minutes. People think an hour is tough. It's yeah. hard to get your ideal across in seven with the seven middle minutes. start, middle and end. Exactly. Start on you, time, end on time. I mean, it's a challenge. Oh, yeah. And you got to be funny. You got to have a great story with a m nice message at the end. There's a lot that goes into it. So yeah. that helped me get into the speaking part. And I, I love that part, too. Like next week, I'm speaking for our local chamber of commerce. And yes. and uh, I tell that story about my the three little words my wife told me that changed everything in my life. And then from there, I get into the rest of the talk. But I still use that story. Yeah, it's a great um, one. It's and it's a hundred percent true. You know, some people yeah. they they stretch their stories, but I everything I do in my book, everything I say is actually happened. Yeah, I had <laughs> uh, to uh, so seven words changed my life twice, <laughs> literally seven words. And the person that said it, two different people, never knew that they had that impact on me. You know, and, and my whole speech is called uh, the, the harnessing your superpower and your superpower are words, and mm -hmm. um, the harness is seven letters, seven words. So it's uh. It's that a no nomenclature or um, not an uh, acronym, but uh, it's when the letters mean a word in, in a sentence. Mm -hmm. But um, it starts with an N M. So I'm not bad at words, but I wrote a book. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better at numbers. Uh, but it's a mnemonic. It's a mnemonic tool. Oh, uh, I see. But it's mm -hmm. seven words. It's this power of words. People people don't realize how how much your words have impact. And uh, mm -hmm. for you, following through on your words is yeah. gives them superpowers. And that's so important. I mean, that, that's everything to me. And, and I, people see it. They know. They trust me. They People I don't even know. I mean, I, I even tell them. I'll that's look at incredible. them sometimes and I'll say, you just met me. But they'll I'll meet them and they'll say, here's the keys to the house. Yes. We'll, we'll be home. I said, really? Because you I emote said, that integrity. I guess. but You do, yeah. I can I, tell from here, even through the camera. <laughs> people have told me that a lot. He said, you have a lot of um, authenticity is what they say. Yeah. And I don't really... I don't see it, but um, but I'm glad it's there, I guess, because it is really what I believe in. Well, um, yeah. you know, authenticity is bred by time. You can't be authentic without time and doing it. And you've done it for how many years now? Oh, over wow. and over. 43 years. And, and Junior, uh, did you end up having just girls or? 
Uh, have, no, I had a, a boy and a girl. Did they yep. perform with it, you in the business it, in the summer times and stuff? My son worked a few summers part time, but he became <laughs> a lawyer. He he wanted he did not want to be, do that. So sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So I I have another great story that I and I know we don't have time to go into. Oh, it, we got a that, little time. We got a little that, time. That same housing crash in two thousand and eight. We, we had saved for their college since they were born. And at that time, my son was 18, my daughter 17. They're both getting ready to go to Bowling Green State University in Ohio. Mm. And I inv decided to invest all their college money, which we had saved in real estate. And I still got these nasty houses and, and I'm never going to get rid of them. No, no. And, um, but, but I thought, I, I honestly thought I wasn't going to be able to buy, get, them, get them in college. And that's when I started working on my business differently. I wrote that first yeah. book at that time. But it was what, and it was funny. As I, a chance, I yeah, joined Toastmasters, but I didn't realize I was applying what I was writing and paying more attention to it. And by the time they got to college, the next semester, I had the money, and we ended up getting them through. No loans, yeah. no loans, no scholarships, and I paid for both their college. And my son went to law school too. Wow! But, but again, it was just the same thing over again. I was the things that I talk about in my book. I was applying. I yeah. did, and, and when I tell that story, I always say, "What's the obvious uh, lesson here?" And, you know, never hire a painter as kids in college. <laughs> I would say that. So, but then I, but I'm honest and straight with people. They they know I'm not the cheapest, but I I do know painters who charge more than me. Well, there, so that, there's always that there's that saying, you know, you get the triangle, right? Cheap, fast and, and good. All right. Yeah. You can have two mm -hmm. out of the three, but you can't have all three ever. But <laughs> right. uh, just to, to rem remind everybody, the book is called. Well, this is your giveaway. Let's talk about that real quick since we're on that slide. Uh, yeah. So the Terry Begg. Uh, and by the way, for the listeners, it's Terry, T-E-R-R-Y. And then the last name is B-E-G-U-E. Is that yeah, French? It, does, it doesn't look like it sounds. Yes, it is French. Big gay, I believe, is the right pronunciation. And for and obvious reasons, I think it got chopped to just beg. <laughs> 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 which is not with something you do anymore. You haven't even advertised. We didn't even talk about this since 2012, which I'm going to go down that. that rabbit hole in a second. But it, the but this is the giveaway. And where do they go to get this? Um, they could just go to terrybeg.com and um, and they can download um, seven ways to grow your business to get more jobs without even spending any money. Seven must be the magic number because that's my yeah. number too. It's seven, it, seven letters, seven questions to ask to transform yeah. any business. Uh, seven, seven, seven. Yeah, yeah, but, and that's what this is. Seven things that you can do, and, and one or two might cost a little bit, but it's probably things you'd like. Have a website is important. Well, um, listen, everybody but, needs to have a little bit of skin in the game anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. People are going to see if you don't have a website. It doesn't matter how good it is, but if you don't have one, they're going to say, "Why don't you? Why can't I find you online?" Yeah, and, well, there's and so much so, to do with it. And you can do a website very cheap, godaddy.com. Yep. Then you go to the uh, to the, the tools they have there, do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. It's really easy. Or you go to Upwork. I pay my girl $6.50 an hour to upload <laughs> new videos. And she literally charges me like $1.18 because she prorates her time. Oh so there, there's so much things you could do now with, uh, with yeah. getting help with website. Oh, uh, yeah. So the non-advertising, we got to go there before we end. Uh, hmm. 2012 was the last time you advertised. And yep. do you use your LinkedIn much to do the, so we say advertise, oh, you're still. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I do have social media have stuff out there. for advertising. No, exactly. I, I have a website great. too. I, I, ha, I do have a website and some people say, well, that's advertising, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I look at that's, it as no, more I, like. That's wrong. It's branding. It is. It's really a video yeah. brochure, community awareness, and yeah. uh, and and right. It, I I don't need the website, but it does help. It it just supports everything else. Yeah, and, no, uh, but it's, no. it's branding. You're not spending the money. Yeah. Advertising to me is actually more like marketing, which is yeah. spending money on uh, commercials and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And, and a lot of people argue that the finer points of uh, of marketing versus advertising. But to your point, uh, branding yourself makes people think of you. Mm -hmm. exactly. you know, and putting your stuff out there every day uh, and so you're posting on linkedin and social media and local uh community boards probably yep mm -hmm. yeah. yeah little stuff like that if i can i like like i'm in my church bulletin and i do that more to support the church i, I have yes. gotten a couple jobs out of it but again i just don't look at that as advertising it's like you say community awareness that's right yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that's been serving you very well. Now, when you say you bid, do you do any commercial jobs anymore? Or do you just uh, mostly the homes? Some, sometimes they come up as long as it's an outside of a building that we can spray. And, yeah, um, yeah. and I'm dealing with the home, uh, the person paying the bill. I, I don't like to work for uh, somebody else who's just, you know, a sub or a, a foreman. Yes. I, I like to work directly GC, for the owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, paid exactly. easier. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. 
So, yeah, but you yeah, know, the money's coming to you and you're going to spend it on the family and your, for your yeah. workers and the quality, uh, the quality products. And right. And we do, we use the best paint you can buy and owners. know. I don't give them the option. A lot of painters have, you know, good, better, best as a, no, we're just going <laughs> to use, I, I, I advertise myself or I market myself as the best. So it wouldn't yeah. make sense, especially when you're a painter, most of the job walks off when you're done. It, the paint's right. not a very big cost. Why skimp on the price? And as soon as I say that to the owners, they go, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. That makes so, sense. And which mm -hmm. area of Ohio are you in for your business? Uh, I mean, we're national, uh, but you know, yeah. I'm Northeast Ohio, like right in between Akron and Canton, Ohio. Okay. So it's, it's like five degrees here today. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, be fun. You got to make sure you do a lot yeah. of the inside work. Yeah. And I love doing podcasts. I get as many of those in as I can in the winter oh, and uh, add write articles and things like that for some magazines. And um, just, I love doing those things, but I do some inside painting as well. Well, I want to tell uh, everyone to make sure that we, you go out to the Terry bag, B E G U E, right? Yes. Com. Yep. And I'll even put it up there one more time on the screen for the viewers and uh, reach out and just talk to Terry. Obviously, very easy to talk to, but a yep. tons of knowledge. I look forward to uh, maybe giving you a, a glimpse of my seven minute speech and getting some feedback from you because, you know, um, that, that Toastmasters is really phenomenal because yeah. you can be vulnerable and you can just yep. show yourself and the people that give you that feedback. It's coming from yep. a good place. Yeah. And you know, something I didn't notice, and I'm, you did too. When I got in there, I thought, well, they're just going to teach me how to give a speech and how to talk. I'm not even that interested in it. But what I really, now that I've been there t uh, 11 or 12 years, looking back, what it did is it gave me confidence yeah. to speak. And that confidence is priceless when you're with a customer. It taught me to be confident what I was saying. And um, even if you know what you're doing in your job, but you're not comfortable talking to the customers, they can read that as you're inexperienced or you're trying to well, hide something. Sure. Or how about right? if you're an employee, it, it gets the opportunity to go speak to the board, you know, mm -hmm. or, your, or your, your boss's boss, you yep. know, all exactly. the difference in the world, how you carry yourself. Oh my and gosh. That's Toastmasters didn't, I don't feel like it made me a better speaker. It gave me confidence to learn, yeah. to, to get out there and talk and, to, and share my message in a way. So people uh, will receive it a little better. Yeah. You know? I, I appreciate your time spending it awesome. here with us and uh, we will get you back on, on the other show. We're doing a show called uh, the risk factor. But Jeremy right. Torsky, is that a risky business? I'm not sure yet what we're naming it yet. But that's <laughs> a, my name in it to risk uh, is, is a fun name. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that over the next few months. But uh, we look see. forward to having you around. And uh, thanks for all the lessons you, you taught us today. Yeah, I love listening to your stories, Jeremy. It just sounds like we were finishing each other's sentences. And those kind of, <laughs> those kind of, inter, those kind of interviews are a lot of fun. So thank you so much for having me on. I'm really grateful. Okay, we'll see you soon. All right. All right. And I want to thank every listener, every viewer of this podcast. We love doing this for you. I actually do it for myself, to be quite honest, but I know that it's got intrinsic value to other people because there's got to be other people like me out there who just want to talk to the best people in the world, doing the jobs that need to be done, finding out the lessons of how they got their success and applying it, just applying it one day at a time, getting 1% better. I hope you learned something today and we'll see you next time on the Go Procast.